The first of NVIDIA's next generation GPUs have been announced, and what's even bigger, the company has officially dropped huge hints that their new GeForce cards are coming at Gamescom and more. Plus, we've got benchmarks, so stay tuned. Welcome back to GamerMelt. Today's video is sponsored by Mastrop, who teamed up with an actual audio company to bring you the PC37X, a gaming headset that's open back for serious presence in games. I've personally used them for a while now, and they're quite possibly the lightest, most comfortable headset I've ever had. If you're interested, check out the thousands of other reviews on it and get yours by following the link in the description below. Now on to the news. Today was NVIDIA's SIGGRAPH keynote speech, and with it came the first of their next generation GPUs officially coined their Turing architecture. At the presentation, the CEO announced three new upcoming Quadra graphics cards. No, these aren't GeForce gaming cards, but they do confirm some very important information about them. For one, these are called the Quadro RTX series, which means the recent trademarks I discussed in my last video were for the hardware, which makes it pretty clear that GeForce RTX will definitely be a thing. Second is a new type of core that was just announced, coined the Ray Tracing Core. It basically helps to enable the card's ability to actually implement ray tracing in real time. This will almost certainly be on NVIDIA's next generation gaming cards, or at least the higher end cards, because NVIDIA has already stated that only their next generation GPUs can handle full real time ray tracing. And since it's highly unlikely the 2070 will far succeed something like a 1080 Ti to the point that it just can't handle it, there has to be something different with this architecture. Before, I thought it would be their tensor cores, but apparently they've found something even better at rendering ray tracing. This actually explains why they waited for Turing to give us new gaming cards. The last thing these tell us is something mostly confirmed at this point, but yeah, GDDR6 will definitely be in them. When it comes to the cards themselves, they're separated into three cards, the Quadro RTX 5000, 6000, and 8000, with the 5000 coming with 3072 CUDA cores, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6, and it comes in at $2300. Then the 6000 comes with 4608 CUDA cores, 24 gigabytes of GDDR6, but is quite a bit more costly at $6300. Lastly is the Quadro RTX 8000 with an unbelievable 48GB of GDDR6 RAM, the same 4608 CUDA cores as the 6000 and comes in at $10,000. So yeah, these certainly aren't for the faint of heart, but remember that they also come with the very expensive tensor cores as well as some insane amounts of memory. Next up for today, right after the SIGGRAPH event, NVIDIA tweeted a teaser trailer for their upcoming event at Gamescom. And yeah, there's so many hints to point to their next generation cards that it should leave little doubt in anyone's mind that they'll be announced on the 20th. First up, you can see quick flashes of a new shroud, as well as a built by Nvidia sign right here. And then it shows someone texting with the capital letters in the name spelling RTX. Next, you can see some users talking in a Discord chat. One of the messages is the coordinates for Gamescom. Then, one user has the name not underscore 11 and he says give me 20. Next the user called Mac 20 is talking to another user by the name of 8T. And lastly at the end the numbers rise up in order of 2080. So yeah the 2080 is absolutely coming and yes while the name has changed since my leaked email I will say that everything else is turning out to be accurate. And if you want more information on the 20 series pricing and all, check out my last video. Lastly, it looks like we've got a couple new benchmarks of the upcoming 2080. Unlike previous benchmarks, these Ashes of Singularity benchmarks seem far more legitimate. The name isn't GTX 2080 or anything like that. They're simply NVIDIA graphics device and is done by what appears to be a workstation. A fake leak would try to be less obscure. Either way, the scores are near what we'd expect from a Titan V and therefore quite respectable. Of course, the most exciting thing about the 2080 isn't so much the specs, but its ray tracing ability. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Excited to finally get your hands on these cards? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, have a great day.